Hello, and behind me is a retired CAC Avon Sabre, which was an Australian assembled and modified version of the North American F-86 Sabre. In this video, I'm gonna take you on a tour of this aircraft. We're gonna walk around the outside, pointing out what's interesting about it, and then we're gonna finish up on the flight deck. So let's go and check it out. I make videos about planes and one train. If you enjoy watching trip reports on board aircraft and tours around significant planes in museums, then make sure you check out my channel, subscribe, click the notification bell, and find me on Instagram and Facebook. I'll start with one of the few remaining airworthy Sabres flying at the Wings Over Illawar Air Show back in 2018. As early as 1949, the RAAF had to replace the aging British Spitfires and Vampires, and the preference continued to buy a new generation of fighters from the mother country. There were a number of British proposals, although they just weren't cutting it, so they decided to look at the United States. The North American F-86 Sabre looked like a good candidate, so the CAC, which stood for the Commonwealth Aircraft Corporation, bought a license to assemble them here in Australia. The F-86 was a fantastic jet, in fact there's contention that it was actually the first jet to break the sound barrier. Just a few weeks before Chuck Yeager broke Mach 1 in the Bell X-1, a civilian test pilot in the F-86 prototype probably and accidentally passed Mach 1 while in a shallow dive. There's conjecture about why this wasn't publicised, as apparently the Air Force wanted one of their pilots to break the record rather than a civilian, and it could be argued that the speed records should be made in level flying anyway. It was a good jet, and the CAC only made it better, mostly by upgrading the engine to the British-built Rosaurus Avon turbojet. They also upgraded the six 50 caliber machine guns to two 30mm cannons that would fire up to 1400 rounds per minute. The cannon blast when firing was actually so dramatic that the muzzle blast could be ingested into the engine and cause it to flame out. They addressed this with these baffles which directed the gas to the side and installing a bleed valve which reduced airflow during firing thus slowing the engine and reducing the ingestion. From 1960, they also carried Sidewinder air-to-air missiles. This thing here is simply a step to climb into the cockpit. Now these wings are really interesting, as this was one of the first jets to have them swept back. In fact, development was well underway with the straight wing design when they got hold of the World War II German designs, showing that the swept design was superior. Initially, there was a lot of resistance to sweeping them back, but the wind tunnel tests couldn't be argued with. One problem with the design was that the wind could slide sideways causing the wing to stall, so these wing fences kept the wind flying over the wing in a straightish line. Underneath are additional fuel tanks that could be dropped once empty. So this interesting flap on the side was the air brake or speed brake that could be used while flying as well as landing to slow the aircraft down. And here is obviously the exit for the turbojet engine, which has been removed from this aircraft. The Avon RA7 turbojet was wider but shorter than the General Electric J47 in the American F86, so they had to move it further back in the aircraft to keep the same centre of gravity, and they also had to widen the nose air intake. By the way, this red thing is a fuel drain pipe. Excess fuel moving between the tanks can escape here and air can be vented when they're filling up. Underneath is the gas pipe that would connect to the back of the engine and direct the force out of the tail. All of the other changes, including increasing the fuel capacity and guns, meant that the CAC had to redesign up to 60% of the airframe. So in many ways, it's a fairly new jet and an incredible effort for such a small company. Obviously, I shouldn't take away from the North American company who did all of the groundwork, but with the upgraded engines, this is regarded as probably the best version of the Sabre that ever flew. Now let's take a look inside and watch my 180 meter centimeter frame struggle to climb in. Ooh. Yeah, it really is, yeah. Immediately on the left, you've got the controls for the cabin airflow, temperature, lighting, etc. Forward to that, you've got the throttle with an integrated button for the air brakes. 
Just medial to that are the flaps controls. Moving forward, you've got the landing gear status indicators, which is fairly self-explanatory. Now this is interesting here, as you've got a Mako meter, which goes up to Mach 1.5, even though this wasn't a supersonic jet. As I said earlier, it was known to break the sound barrier during dives, although it couldn't go supersonic in level flight. Remember, the jet engines don't work with supersonic air, so it would have been one of many problems the jet would have had if it accidentally crossed Mach 1. There's a few gauges missing, so we'll continue down to the armament panel. Here you can see the settings for the cannons, bombs and rockets. You can even jettison the rockets if you want, and this big dial selects the rocket depression angle and allows you to change what the site is used for, either the rockets, the guns or the bombs. And on the right here, you've got the radio communications and navigation systems. TACAN stands for Tactical Air Navigation and is similar to DME seen on civilian aircraft. Essentially, there are stations all around the world, often at airports, for example, and they transmit radio waves and receive them from the aircraft. The onboard equipment interprets these and gives the pilot a distance from and direction towards the station. Remember that these flew before the days of GPS. Up in front would be a gun sight, although a lot of that stuff is missing in this example. Now it was really cool closing the canopy and looking around imagining the similar views that the pilots would have experienced all around the world. Although it's Darwin, which is pretty hot, especially in March, so I got out. From 1964 to 5, the Dassault Mirage 3, which you'll see in a second, began to replace the Sabre and on the 31st of July 1971, the RAAF officially retired the Sabre from service. So in summary, it's an American jet based on a German design, powered by the POMs and perfected by the Aussies. And I'm not sure how many times that has ever been said. Thanks for watching and I have many more aviation videos on my channel including tours around other RAAF jets. So please check them out and don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, etc. See you another time.